Hey there, everybody at Premier. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to share and um, and be a part of this uh, work that you all are doing on the omnivores dilemma here. I have been asked to uh, answer some questions for you all and give you some of my experience as it relates to growing food and the local food economy and some of the things that are um, part of the general conversation, I guess, with the omnivores dilemma. So I'm thrilled to hear that you all were were interested in in some of the things that that book that book brought up. Um, a little bit about myself. So I operate an organization called Custom Foodscaping, and we are a kind of like a landscaping company. So we plant trees, we mulch, we add compost, and we do all that in the context of kind of healing the planet, doing ecological landscaping, we might call it, and growing food for people. Growing food is the thing that really separates us from other kinds of companies who are doing this kind of work. And we're really rooted in this mission of connecting people to the earth, connecting to the cycles of nature, and connecting to seasonal food. Um, and and we, we hope that the work that we're doing is, is advancing those goals. So um, a little bit you know, about how I started is that um, I started out as, a, uh, as somebody who, looking for a way to improve the world. And um, I was kind of in my early 20s and searching for that path. And I ended up stumbling into farming. And that happened through um, doing some work with the Peace Corps. The Peace Corps is kind of a government program that you can apply to do where you go live somewhere else in the world for a few years and learn from those folks and share your skills. And I ended up going to Paraguay, which is a country in uh, in the middle of South America, one of the kind of unsung heroes of South America that most people don't know about. It was a really fascinating experience and almost all the people that live in Paraguay are still farmers. And so I was living on a rural farm and I started to learn from my farmer neighbors and I was just totally in awe of their knowledge and their connectedness to nature and the seasons and they had all these fruit trees like mangoes and papayas and oranges and grapefruits and I was like totally amazed by how abundant just the trees growing around them were and they were they didn't seem to really be doing doing much yet they would just walk outside and harvest all this delicious fruit and I thought well this is crazy why why didn't I grow up like this at all we never had anything edible growing around me so that kind of really got me excited about wanting to learn how to do this stuff myself I just kept on asking questions is is often the case when you kind of generate this curiosity in in life it's like well why why aren't we growing food how how do we grow food what what is the key to growing food oh and then then you start learning about soil and all the different plants of our region and then um and then started learning about well what's what's in season here like what are the local farmers in my part of the world growing so i think um that really brought me into wanting to garden and farm myself. And so I ended up working for other people on farms and gardens and doing what is called apprenticeships. And apprenticeship were kind of like paid positions, um, working under experienced people. So I worked on a few farms and got my experience that way. And I, I traveled to places that seemed like they were doing interesting work and, and visited them and really just was exploring this whole idea of of uh of the farming and, and really about small farming because it was really the the idea of um things that you read about in, in omnivore's dilemma in terms of like the, the the farmers who are still small and connected to their land and don't spend all their time on a tractor and know their clientele and you know when i was involved in those types of farming operations i realized that there was this really powerful two really powerful things. One is planting a seed and harvesting it was just the most exhilarating experience I'd ever been a part of. I thought, and I still feel like it's just a total miracle that we can be so in control of our own destiny and connect so closely to with, with what actually sustains us. You know, I think so often we spend our days kind of technologically 
um, consumed and we don't actually have much connectedness to the things that support our, our life, our being, you know, the air and the water and the food. Um, and, and beyond that are the relationships that we value and that make life actually meaningful. And I think that connecting to the air, the water and the food piece was really cool with, um, growing food. But then like when you are working on a small farm, you know, oftentimes you're connected to where that food goes and who your clientele are. And then you get to have this like personal connection, which also felt really fulfilling for me. So I, I loved the idea of knowing where the food was coming from, going to the farmer's market, selling at the farmer's market. And, and that led me to working at the Earth Dance Organic Farm School. And so that's a it's basically a farm school in Ferguson, which is in North County here in St. Louis. It teaches people about farming and gardening. And I, I loved working there and teaching people the things that I had learned. Um, and a lot of people, you know, like your teacher, were reaching out to us at Earth Dance saying, like, we want to do this kind of stuff at our school. We want to grow food. Or people were saying, can, can you all help us? at at our homes like to grow food like this and have a garden and have fruit trees and um and at earth dance we were constantly telling people you know we've got this farm here this is where we do our education we don't really go to other people's sites and and set up gardens and so that really gave me the idea to do custom foodscaping which is the the business that i mentioned earlier and that's what i'm doing now and so we basically design and install edible gardens for people. So if you're somebody who's at home and you're like thinking, oh, I'd love to get rid of all this grass and plant something edible and beautiful, then we are who you call. You know, we we do that for residences. We also do it for all kinds of businesses like schools and hospitals and churches. and, um, and, And I think that, you know, the reason that we do this work is really like I've kind of mentioned a lot of this already, but the reason we do it is because, well, you all know how broken our food system is. We have um, we have two really big problems that I think that I'm personally trying to work towards solving and be a part of the solution um, with this work. The first one is how our current way of growing food is incredibly damaging to the environment, which to me is incredibly ironic because it's of course the environment that makes life hospitable in the first place you know if we um continue to destroy the the forests and the water and all of the good soil that make agriculture possible then we don't really have a chance of sustaining this type of lifestyle into the future so we absolutely have to take care of mother earth because mother earth is is the life support system that allows for um, us to to live healthfully on this planet. And I think that what we see in books like The Omnivore's Dilemma is that we're destroying our topsoil and pouring pesticides and fungicides into the soil. And all of these things are destroying the water and they're destroying everything that lives in the soil. And the effect of that is that we get unhealthy. We as a society are of course, eating all this processed food and things that we know aren't very nutritious for us. But a lot of times we don't know what the options are or we don't know how to cook things that are would otherwise be healthy. So we end up in this vicious cycle of destroying the earth and destroying our bodies through unhealthy eating. And so I think our work with custom foodscaping is really all about giving people the opportunity to, to change that narrative and to to say, oh, well, I can actually, I can grow my own healthy fresh fruits and vegetables. I can, I can compost in my own yard and and create healthy soil. Um, so that's really what we focus on is is creating that opportunity. We want to, we see the future as not all food growing professionals being farmers. You know, the days of farmers are dwindling, and um, and because of mechanization and bigger and bigger tractors and smarter and smarter technology. I think we're going to just continue to see the idea of lots of farmers being out on the land, something that continues to go down. So it's really on us um, to think about, well, what's the future going to look like? And I, I hope that the future looks a little bit like um, companies, foodscaping companies like Custom Foodscaping, working with different clients 
any client that is currently doing any landscaping work, whether that be you know planting trees and shrubs or mowing the grass, they are a potential candidate for growing food in that space. So that's that's really our hope. We want to expand this business. We want to grow it. We want we want the opportunity for people to graduate from high school and think, hey, I, I want to be a foodscaper. Like I want to be outside working with my hands. I don't want to be at a desk. I don't want to be in the at the computer because that's how I am. You know, when I was your all's age, I was miserable in the classroom and really um, fidgety and felt like I needed to be moving around, doing things, the things that I excelled at, like talking to people and and building things and um, getting dirty and being creative didn't seem to be very well valued within the school system. So this life path of growing food and um, working with the earth is really lends itself to my skill set way better than some of the other career paths that I could have chosen. Um, I think that you know, lastly, I'm just kind of looking at some of the questions here. Um, gosh, I, I think that the biggest takeaway I had from the omnivores dilemma is when I look back on having originally read that book is that we have got to repair our relationship with the, um, the food economy, the way that we grow food, both, you know, how the food is grown on farms, but also the way that we consume food, which is often mindlessly and um, in a way that doesn't really honor the immense effort and the the potency of food that we put in us because it has the ability to either heal us or to make us sick. And we have that choice. And when we every time we buy food, we have the chance to to make a choice that says, I can buy this food from someone who is working to heal the land through agriculture or somebody who is destroying the land through agriculture. So I think it's, I, I think it's that realization that really put me on this path after reading The Omnivore's Dilemma. And with that, I, I will leave you all. Um, thanks again for this opportunity. My name is Matt, and you guys um, should feel free to reach out to email me. I'm going to make sure that your teacher has that information. Um, I would love to hear from you all, and I hope this has been helpful. Have a great rest of your school year.